Hello, Keith Rucker here at VintageMachinery.org. Guys, we're still working on our New Haven metal planer restoration and still working on doing some scraping, a lot of scraping involved in this project to get uh, worn surfaces really back up to snuff. We've been working on this uh, cross arm piece. This is a piece that goes up and down on the planer that the clapper box moves left and right on. And I've already got the bottom surface here scraped nice and flat and plain. We've already got the areas that run on the uprights scraped flat, uh, flat and plain and also parallel to this bottom. Uh, the next step in here is I need to scrape this dovetail. And this is where the clapper box actually rides on and goes back and forth. And it needs to be scraped where it is flat. Uh, obviously, we're going to have a dovetail on one side. The other side's just at 90 degrees. I'm going to have to scrape both sides. And uh, we need to make these two sides in, uh, in the end or top to bottom, whatever you want to say here, they have to be parallel as well. So it can't be thicker at one end, but thicker between these distances on one end and the other because that piece has to go all the way back and forth. And it's adjusted very finely so that it will travel. You don't want it to get real tight in certain areas and get loose in other areas. I suspect that just like the other surfaces on the front, you know, most of the wear, most of that movement of that cross head over the years was kind of in the center range. So I assume, I'm going to assume off the bat that it's a little bit lower in here because we're going to have more wear and less wear out here at the very ends. So um, we'll verify that pretty quickly. Uh, but first thing I want to do is just come in here. We're going to just put a cross hatch pattern with the scraper from one end to the other. Uh, that will allow me to start bluing this thing up and start looking to get everything in a plane. Once I get this top surface in a plane, we'll start making measurements to the other side and uh, seeing how parallel those two sides are to one another. Let's get our Biax power scraper out and uh, we'll start going to town here. I will just comment before we get started. I, I made a little adjustment to my fixture here to hold this up where I'm basically scraping a flat surface, even though it's at an angle. I've just found from experience doing scraping, it's a lot easier to scrape when you're working on something that's fairly flat. When you're trying to get in behind at an angle one way or the other, things get really difficult. You train yourself to, to scrape in a flat plane. So if you can manipulate your work to get it into a flat plane, it makes things a lot easier. Now scraping on these dovetails, uh, you know, you're kind of going back into a back here. I'm probably going to have to do some hand scraping with this, true hand scraping with a hand scraper to get back in that back. Again, just based on past experience. I'm going to start with this wide cutter. I'm probably going to have to pretty quickly switch over to a real narrow cutter that actually is only sharp on one side. And I have it ground so that it can get farther back into these corners. But for just this uh, initial roughing to get a first blue in to see where we're at, I think I can get it done with this wider cutter. So we'll just come in here again and we will uh, put our cross hatch in here. I'm trying to get all the way back there into that back as far as I can go. And we'll go all the way down and come back the other way once we uh, get this first uh, angle laid in there. kind of hard to see with the light in here, but hopefully you can see that what we've got here is just a rough cross hatch pattern in here with the scraper. I didn't really, I just tried to go in one direction, back in the other direction, completely blind, no blue marks. This just gives me a pattern that I can start spotting off of, and uh, we're going to get ready to start bluing this up. Before we get too deep into this, I want to kind of explain what we're going to be doing. So we're going to be bluing up the dovetail edge on our straight edge and we'll come in here with the straight edge and basically put it back there in the back and we'll use that flat edge on the straight edge to blue up in here and get us a, a measurement and I can already see I'm going to have to knock some corners off of this thing to get some clearance but we'll do that before we get started. But Look at what I'm dealing with, okay? My straight edge is 36 inches. The part I'm bluing 
is about 48 inches. So I've got about a foot extra longer back here than what I got on my straight edge. Ideally, you want your straight edge or the part that you're bluing from to be longer than the part that you're bluing so that you can get contact from one end to the other. Here's the challenge that we're going to run into with this uh, part. I told you before, I suspect that the center part of this is going to be worn more than the ends. So if I come in here with my straight edge and I put it in here and I blew it and I run from one end to the other, go back and forth, what's going to happen is, is that it's going to be touching here and here. And then as I come in, it's going to be touching here on kind of on the ends and I'm going to get a false blue pattern. Okay. It's going to be showing a nice blue pattern, but it's really not going to be true from one or the other. So I'm going to be doing this kind of in sections to start with. I'll come in here, I'm going to blue up the end, and I'm going to look and see what's going on. If it's like I suspect, we'll probably see blue on the ends. But that doesn't necessarily mean I need to scrape any material out of here, because if I do the same thing over here, it's high here and high here. That's telling me I got a belly, so I need to work on my ends, bring them down. Once I start getting good blue contact from one end to the other across this, and I, I, then I can come in here and blue up on this end and, and look and kind of compare it. What I want to do is see again, blue all the way across. And uh, so once I do that, then yeah, I can probably start going back and forth with my straight edge to get it uh, trued up. But it's going to be a little bit dicey at first. We're going to have to be a little bit careful and watch what we're doing. So let me get my straight edge blued up. I'm going to have to cut these corners off and uh, we'll blue it up the first time. See if my suspicions are true. So we've got our straight edge blued up. I'm going to come in here, go all the way to the back, drop it down onto that surface, trying to keep it flat. And I'm just going to do a little short stroke right here, back and forth, ring it off. Ha! Huh, that actually looks a lot better than I thought. Yeah, this looks a lot better than what I was really anticipating. So I've actually got coverage from about here to here. We're missing something in the very middle and then we start picking up back over here. So what I'm going to do now is, uh, I think what I'm going to do is take a Sharpie pen and kind of make some notes to myself here. Now I basically got coverage to about right in here. I'm just going to put a mark there and then I got coverage from about here to about here. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is we're going to clean that out and we'll spot it from the other end and kind of compare notes. It looks like we may be a little bit low right here in the very middle, but if we get a similar pattern over there, this is going to make this scraping job a lot easier because you're going to not be near as much material to have to take out of here as what I was anticipating. Same process again. Come in here and short stroke. This actually is uh, <laughs> working out very much to my favor. So I'm picking up from end to end except for this same little gap right here in the middle. So what I think I'm going to do is uh, we're just going to come in here and scrape both ends. I'll probably do a double pass and avoid this kind of low spot in here and come back and do this again. So let me get my Sharpie. I'll tell you what, let me clean that up first. So I'm looking at my marks I made down here on the front. And again, this one up here worked out almost exactly in the same area. So I'm basically going to Put a mark there, put a mark there. We're not going to scrape in this area, but I'm going to do a double scrape on both ends and then we'll come back and do this checker again. Start at the end, go to that middle. By scraping this area, I'm lowering it down by a very small amount probably two to three ten thousandths of an inch at the very most.
I'm getting over here to my marks where I want to stop. And then we'll come back and pick up about here and work our way to the end again. Now we're coming back across. And again, we're going 90 degrees to that last pass, making a cross hatch pattern in here, leaving some high spots for us to blue off of. And we'll go back to that mark that I made previously on the last pass, which we're approaching here right about now. So we won't go past that point. I'll come down here and pick up and go down the rest of the way. We've deburred it. I've come in here and actually blued up again on just this end on the right side of this. But I want you to see what's happening. This is what we're trying to accomplish here with our scraping. Now, you can still see here were the lines that we scraped to last time. But look what's happened with our blue. We've actually gone. Now that line is kind of, you know, blueing up from about here over into about there over. So I've still got a hole, but instead of being this wide, it's now this wide. Now I'm gonna come in here, I'm gonna blue it up again from the other end. I'll probably do that off camera. Make sure nothing funky's going on. If there is, I'll bring you back and show you, but I don't suspect there will be. But uh, we'll continue on. I'm just gonna do another pass, bring this area down, bring this area down, and maybe in another couple of passes, we'll have blue from one in the other. Then we can really start working on this. And I'm, I've actually got decent coverage in here right now. I'm getting really lucky on this, uh, which kind of tells me that maybe this planer wasn't as worn as I thought it was, uh, because I've been getting lucky on several parts here. So that's, that's good news. That's real good news. Makes my job easier. So more scraping, I'll bring you back here in just a little bit. Well guys, I've gotten really lucky on this. So after we checked it, that's after that second cross hatch, I pretty much got blue from one in the other. Yeah, we've got a couple of light areas in here, still just a little bit light here in the middle, but I've got blue spots everywhere in there. I'm actually now lightened up a little bit on my ends uh, a little bit but uh, I basically just spotted it on this side. I went ahead and just spotted it on this side. I was getting the same more or less pattern here in the middle. It didn't really change. So now what I'm ready to do is I'm ready to start working on the blue spots and just working on those areas to get my coverage better. And I'm really, really close right here to being done with this if everything continues to work out good. So uh, I've even got spotting all the way into the very back. A lot of times it's kind of hard to get back in the back of that. In fact, I may get my hand scraper and hit the very back of those blues, uh, but we're moving on. So anyway, I'm going to come in here now. We're only working on the, the high spots. I'm not really doing just step scraping kind of like I was before. I was just doing the whole areas. We're just bringing down um, everything to get good coverage. So come in here. A little bit light on the end, so I'm really being a little bit more futzy down here. Just hitting those uh, blue areas. When we get toward the center, it picks up. So. And um, I am going to do that back by hand. So there's a little bit of a low spot there where honestly what's happened is it's really hard to get this scraper all the way in that back corner. And so this is kind of where I was ending. So I was really kind of getting it deeper there. And you can kind of see a little bit of a line almost all the way down through here. And that's just because that back's not done like it needs to. So I'm gonna just focus on the front and I'm gonna do the back by hand. I'll show you that in a minute. So I got my hand scraper now and I've got a little narrow cutter here. It's actually only sharp on the bottom. It's beveled on the top. And what that allows me to do is get right back into these corners and these dovetails. And I really just can't do that with the power scraper. So we'll just come in here and do this the old fashioned way. I'm just kind of hitting those blue spots. We'll work our way down through here and try to take that little 
back part out where the power scraper just can't get down into. I'll bring you back here in a minute. I've taken a couple more passes and I'm pretty happy with what I'm seeing here. This has turned out just absolutely beautiful. I'm gonna kind of pan you down through there. Hang on a second. Let's see if we can kind of roll down through here with the camera from one end to the other. And uh, like I said, I'm real happy with uh, the area contact from one end to the other. Light's getting a little brighter down here. Now we're getting out in front of the light, but anyway, you can see uh, that's just beautiful. I'm tickled with that. Well, looking over here, trying to figure out what my next uh, step's gonna be and figuring out what surfaces I still have to worry with here. So this is the actual clapper box casting. This is what moves back and forth on the front of this. There's some screws that go through this that move it left and right to get it in the proper position. And just so you kind of know, there are, there's a flat gib that goes behind the dovetail. There's a flat gib that goes on this um, bottom down here. And then there's also a flat gib that goes behind uh, this piece here. Uh, we got gibs on these surfaces and this surface back here, it just rides on and it, you know, it looks to me like it's probably coming in contact with both of these surfaces at the same time. So um, I'm sitting here trying to decide what surface I need to, to scrape next. So ultimately the next thing I want to do is I want to make this gib, or excuse me, this dovetail to be parallel along this axis here to this back right here. And I'm gonna do that by putting a pin in here and measuring, but instead of starting over on this side, I need to scrape this bottom here. I need to make sure that this plane is parallel to this one. And uh, that's gonna be my next step because if I, if I go over here and do this first and come back over here, it could actually, change the position of that pin that I'm measuring with. And if, if I don't do it, it could, it could be, the, this surface could be higher or lower going down through here or in a different relationship to the top. Uh, so that could actually change my measurement and I would be scraping this end in incorrectly. So this is my next surface to scrape. So before I start scraping this bottom piece flat, I want to get an idea of what, how much it's out from the top. I don't know whether it's going uphill, downhill, got a belly in it or what, but I want to make some measurements so that I kind of know where I'm starting from. Uh, so we can do some step scraping or whatever to start the process of getting it flat. So to do this, I'm going to use a depth micrometer. And uh, of course, we'll come in here, we'll just lay it across the top here. And with a scraped surface, you know, you've got high points, you've got low points. Those uh, high points are, of course, what turn blue. We're going to be laying across multiple high points here with the, uh, the top. And down here on the bottom, I'm kind of doing the same thing. Instead of making just a measurement in a single point, I'm going to take an average over that surface. So I've got a gauge block, which is just a very uh, precise parallel ground and lap surface. So I'm gonna be laying that down there. We'll be measuring off of that. The measurements are really kind of relative to one another at this point. All I wanna know is what the distance is from the top of this to the top of this piece. And really I don't even know what care what the whole measurement is. I wanna know what the difference is in between all the measurements uh, because that's gonna tell me the story. So I'm just gonna get a measurement here and it's, it's reading what is this, uh, one inch, uh, set, one inch 80 thousandths. But guys, I'm gonna make this real easy. It's reading a five on the dial right now. Uh, and I've already roughly checked this. I'm only out a few thou. I'm just gonna write a five on here, okay? That gives me what I wanna know. This, this uh, micrometer only measures to a thou. I think what I'll do <coughs> is just estimate to a half thou. So we'll do like we did before, and we'll just call it a 50. That's 50 ten thousandths of an inch, okay? And we're just gonna kinda go down through here, <coughs> make these measurements in various places, see what they all come out to be. That one's a 50 as well. 
That measurement really doesn't tell me anything right now. What I want to know is what the difference between these are. What's the highest number? What's the lowest number? And what's the difference in the heights from one place to another? Okay. Measure that again. Okay, we're measuring 50. That's good so far. They've all been the same, which tells me that these two surfaces are at least starting out parallel. All right, we've got a little bit of difference here. I'm gonna call that a 65, so six and a half thousandths. That one's going to be a 75. So seven and a half thousandths or two and a half thousandths lower here than it is on the end. That's 85. It looks like we have some wear going on in the center section, which kind of goes along with what we've seen in other places as well. So, okay, this is back to 50. Call out a 45. Call this a 40. Forty. Yeah, and forty. Between 35 and 40, but it's closer to 40. So, all right. So, my lowest or my smallest number is a 40. My biggest number is an 85. So, again, this tells me that this is my lowest point. This is the lowest area that I measured. This is the highest area that I measured. There's one thousandths difference between the two ends. Looks like that. This end of the machine was used more than the other, which makes sense because this is the side that the operator works on. As you get around here, you're getting farther away. So he would set his pieces up closer to him. And this is where most of the wear took place. I'm gonna make my lowest the zero. So my 85 is gonna be a zero. And we're gonna figure the difference between that. So 85 minus 75 is gonna be 10. 65 is 20. 85 and 50 is going to be 35. Got 35 again here and 35 again here. Go the other way, 35, 40, 45, 45, 45. So four and a half thou is the most my ends are high my middle is low so uh, what I'm going to do is uh, we're going to do a series of step scraping here and uh, work our we're kind of work our way down so these are all the same I'm going to hit these I'm kind of putting in here where my gradients are So I'm going to hit this area first, this area second, this area third. I'm also going to hit this area third. Then fourth 
fifth and then barely touching there. Okay, Let's get the scraper out and uh, start working those areas. And I'm gonna check this on this end first, kind of like we did the dovetail because I can't go the whole distance. I'm just gonna check one end then the other. See what we got. Huh, it's not too bad. We're getting some spotting. Um, looks like it's a little bit low in here, but this was my area that was reading low to begin with, so I don't know that I believe that quite yet. Um, I'm gonna blue it up again, see what we got, and we'll go from there. Probably need to take this end down a little bit, and probably gonna need to take this end down a little bit more too. Let me clean that up, see what we got. All right, that really tells a story. Because if you remember, we were getting a lot of blue in this area before, but now in this area where my, most of my wear was, not a whole lot. So that tells me, um, tells me what's going on here. I need to stay out of this area, which matches my original measurements. So really from about right in there, I just need to stay completely out of. I'll tell you what I'll do. I kinda kinda clean this up, re-blue this, and see. So remember there was a little bit of a low spot over here. So I think I'm gonna ignore this high spot in here altogether. That was in my lowest point. We're gonna kinda work on that back back there. We're gonna stay out of this area altogether. And we're gonna kinda knock that in down there some. Blew it up again and try it again. It's gonna take a couple passes, but hopefully we'll get this uh, straightened out pretty quick. Well guys, it's taken a little bit of work, but I think we have pretty well got this surface here flat in a plane and more or less parallel with the top, making my measurements. I'm no more than a half a thou out as far as the distance from here to here. I've got pretty good coverage again from one end to the other. So now that we got the dovetail done, we got this back flat done, the next step is going to be to come in here and work on the other side. And I've really got three surfaces I need to scrape over here. First thing we'll do is we'll scrape this back surface here. It's actually the top surface, I believe, uh, once this thing is in place. We need to get that where it is scraped in, in plane and parallel to the dovetail on the other side. We'll use a pin and measure across that. That's going to be in an upcoming video because I'm running out of time here today. Um, and we've got some other things we need to get, be getting done for this planer pretty quickly. Uh, but what's left is the top. We got the back side here and then this surface back here. So three more surfaces to scrape, uh, getting kind of into the short rows. This is by far the most complex uh, part that we've got in this whole scraping job, I do believe. As far as the amount of surfaces and then every, all the geometry that's involved, the parallelism and different planes, all needing to be just right. So my plan is, is that I've got everything that's been scraped so far is, is in pretty good shape right now. But before we get through, I'm going to go in here, we'll double check everything, probably do some fine tuning. Um, as crazy as it sounds, if I move metal on this side, it's probably going to have a very small effect on the flatness of this side over here. So just by me working on different surfaces, it can change the, how things are going to blow up. Uh, tiny amounts, but tiny amounts matter when you're scraping. So we'll go back after we've done everything. We'll, we'll recheck everything, touch everything up, and this will be ready to go. So what I got to do now is get the shop cleaned up tomorrow morning, uh, bright and early. Uh, we're loading up the planer bed and we're loading up the planer table. And that's all going up to Milwaukee, Wisconsin. And uh, I'm going up there with it and we're gonna be getting the bed and that table ground in. Uh, Cash Masters up at Kinetic is going to be doing that work for us and uh, I'm going to be going up there hopefully getting some video to share with you guys the process of grinding that in. He's got the right equipment to do that, I do not. So we're going to take it up there and uh, work with Cash 
to get that done. Really looking forward to that trip. Uh, I think this is going to be a lot of fun and it's going to really get this piece over here where it's ready to go. So with that, that's going to be a wrap on this video. We'll get back to finish to this after we get back with the planer bed and table. And uh, we've got some more scraping to get done uh, in general, but I've got a big chunk of it knocked out before we take the bed up to get ground. So I'm real happy about that. We're moving along in this project. It's going to be a long road and there is a lot of really fussy work to get this machine tuned back in and hopefully working at the level of precision that I'm hoping to get out of it. So with that, guys, it's going to be a wrap on this video. As always, thanks for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Comments are always appreciated and we'll catch you guys on the next video.